Thank you. Hello. And hope you had a good lunch, a little bit of coffee, not too much wine, so to follow it. And so I'll show you a little bit of the Redis and Go magic and see if its love story is better or worse than Romeo and Juliet. But before we get our hands dirty, I wanted to give a little bit of an introduction about myself. I've been a software engineer for the past 10 years, back-end developer, and I've go, worked with Golang for the past three years. Mostly worked with uh, databases like Redis, PostgreSQL, MySQL. And I've worked with other technologies as well, like um, uh, well, different programming languages like C Sharp, Java, and a little bit of Python. Also, uh, when I'm not coding, um, I really enjoy outdoor activities, something like hiking, running, cycling. Uh, I'm also a football fan, but I'm not going to reveal which team I support. I don't want to cause any problems here. <laughs> and also, it's a love that, that is not like going Redis. It's not shared. I mean, I like watching it, but I'm not a good football player. Finally, I also read a lot of fantasy, Brandon Sanderson and George R. R. Martin. Uh, fun fact, I just bought a Brandon Sanderson novel here in Florence in Italian, and I can't speak Italian. <laughs> so that was a great purchase from my part. And when I'm not coding, I also write about, uh, how, write about coding problems in my blog, which I'll share at the end of the presentation, where you, can guys, where you guys can check out some, some topics that I've, that I've worked on, issues and technologies that you might find interesting. All right, now that you know my autobiography, we can start working, uh, we, can st we can get our heads dirty. So I don't know about you, but there are things that just fit, fit together. You have your burgers, or veggie burgers, you mix them up with some beer, and that works. You also have this guy who looks a little bit like me. You mix him up with beer as well, and that works as well. But what about Redis and Golang? Well, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about this uh, here. Basically, uh, the main core of this talk will be exposing both or explaining both languages, uh, both both uh, libraries, the most popular libraries used to connect. Redis and Golang. We will, we will run through them, we will see their characteristics, and at the end we'll do a small benchmark comparing which one uh, is better or worse in terms of performance. So what spiked my interest for this talk? Well, earlier this year, it was, I believe it was February or March, I saw that there was, um, there was an article in the Redis blog post, blog post it caught my, caught my attention. Go Redis is now the official Redis client. As I said, I've worked with Golang for the past three years, and I've worked with Redis a little bit more, mainly C Sharp, but I didn't know which uh, client we use in my company. Because basically what we do is we have a common library where we wrap the external client, and that way we have a, we have a common library that is used by all our services, and we don't know about the, the external client being used. So after some digging around, I was very surprised to find out that it wasn't Go Redis. It was another client called Ready Go that was being used by, by our services. And this just spanned a lot, of, uh, a lot of questions in my head. Like, why aren't we using the Go Redis one? What, what, is the, what, uh, what advantages does this uh, Ready Go offer? What would be the cost of integrating this new client? Why is it so popular compared to the other one? Why do Redis endorse it? What are the characteristics, advantages? Can we, can we integrate it? Do we, use the same, the, the, do we use all the things that both of them share? Well, I'm going to try to answer some of these questions now. Before, before I start with the packaging, I don't know if you, if you know a little bit about Redis. I, uh, I assume that most of you know. But for those who don't know, I wanted to give a little introduction to Redis so you guys can know w what type of database is and how does it work. Redis is an open source, now relational database created in 2009. Fun fact, it's created the same year that Go, Golang went um, open source. It uses key value storage. So why do people use Redis so much in this day of age? Why is it so popular? Well, the simple, the simple answer to that is it's very fast. Redis uh, uses in-memory storage as opposed to other databases that use in-memory plus secondary, uh, secondary storage. Having that data stored in, me in memory only allows it to be recovered very, very fast. 
And you can see that, or if you dig around a little bit, you will see that the main usage for Redis is distributed caching. Basically, services use it, use it as a distributed caching system and, uh, to store data and to, and to recover it between every inst instance of the service. Also, data is organized in simple data structures. You have your data structures like hashes. You have your data structures like lists, uh, simple strings, and, uh, and others as well, and sets, for example. And in terms of uh, features, Redis, is, Redis offers a lot of, um, a lot of simple, is, is, is a yeah, pretty simple set of features in comparison to other databases like PostgreSQL or MySQL, for example. Yeah, all that seems great. There's got to be a catch, right? It can't be all perfect like this. Well, one of the things that, it, the, that Redis lacks in comparison to the other, to the, to other databases is that disadvantage of being an in-memory database, of course, offers a drawback. Storing your data only in memory reduces the, the size of the data you want to store. Having only in-memory data doesn't, doesn't, doesn't allow you to store so much information, like, for example, uh, a Postgre or, or a Mongo or a, a different database, relational or not relational database, can do. So that, that is a drawback if you, wanna, if you wanna use Redis. Or better yet, I wouldn't recommend using, using Redis to store terabytes or petabytes of information if you want your service to run, to run good. And the other thing that I, uh, that I looked into was um, a few months ago I did a course that introduced me this, that showed me this little phrase here. It makes you think a little more. What does that mean? Well, in this course, uh, this, this is a database where you have to think a little bit more how you want to consult your data before you store your data. For example, in a, in a MySQL, uh, you, you can dump your data basically in a table. Imagine that you have a table like books, and you have a, your book ID, you have your book, your book name, and your book description. You can, you can insert this data, and then you can do different selects, one, one for the name, one for the, for the book ID, one for the description. But when Redis, it's not that simple. Given its limited set of data structures, you really have to think how you want to consult your data before you store it. This way, for example, if you store it, uh, since it's a key value, you have to think about what your key will be before you consult it. Of course, there are tricks in Redis now. It's very modern. You can do, you can do different things, like, for example, easy access. But this just made me think a little more, and I, and I wanted to share it with you guys. OK. Now, on to the packages itself. The first package we already, we already briefly talked about is Go Redis. Go Redis, like I mentioned, is a package that was endorsed by Redis itself to be used as the go-to package for a uh, Redis connection between clients and uh, between, ser between services and Redis. This is by far the most popular package in, in, in Go. This package currently stands with 18,000 stars on GitHub. It also, you can see here there's a little chart where you can see that, uh, I don't know if it's, it's, it sees well, but it's a chart that shows the commits being performed to this, uh, to this library in, in the past year, I believe. You see that it's very, very active. Currently, there are issues being resolved daily. Uh, there, are, there are merges monthly, like there are a lot of merges monthly, and it's a very, very popular, popular, popular library. Now, regarding the more technical perks, Red, uh, Go Redis offers automatic connection pooling. It also allows custom commands, and it uh, is compatible with Redis Sentinel and Redis Cluster clients. For those who don't know about Redis Sentinel, Redis Cluster cli clients, uh, Redis Sentinel, uh, its goal is to monitor the Redis instances, offer notification capabilities, master discovery, automatic failover in case of failure, etc. While Redis Cluster, it's basically a specific Redis client that connects multiple Redis instances in a cluster-like, uh, cluster-like, uh, yeah, structure. This client is the one to manage the data that is being sharded between different, between different cluster, cluster nodes. So, how do we create this Redis client? This is a very simple, there's a very simple way to do this. Uh, once you get or get your library in your local environment, you can simply uh, use, use the goredis.client structure. So, but by the way, sorry, forgot to mention something. 
Uh, here, this is an implementation that I've done basically to wrap, just like I said before, to wrap the, the external client. We use this Redis repository structure that we have here that wraps it. Uh, but we can see that we're using the client internally as well. So basically what this does is uh, uses the goredis.newclient function uh, to, init, to get a new client instance to a specific Redis. You see that this has a parameter inside it that is the operations. Well, the, the, the options, sorry, the options. Well, these options are, uh, the, the, it varies a lot. In my case, I'm using a simple um, Docker initialized Redis in my, local, in my local environment, so I don't need much, many, many things. But here I have the address. You can add authentications like uh, user password and specific client customiz cust uh, customizations like uh, keep lives, retries in case the command fails, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we call the Redis command? Well, there is one thing that in the other slide I didn't mention on purpose, is that uh, Redis offers a type safe uh, a, a API library style. What does that mean? Well, it implements, it, well, the, contains the majority of Redis commands as functions in the package. This means that if you want to perform uh, hash get all or h get all, the Redis client already has the h get all function implemented, like you see here client.hgetO. This is a very important difference when we compare it to its competitor later on. This, in my, in my opinion, is very, 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 very cool because uh, I don't know about you, but I tend to forget commands. Like if, if you're running, uh, for example, if you're running, if you're connecting to the Redis itself and you want to do a hgetO, I have found myself so many times just writing hash get all and command not found, hash get all, command not found, and Basically, what I do is I go to Google, how to get how to recover commands from Redis, and it shows H get on. I'm like, I'm such an idiot. Should have removed the other. But yeah, for me, this is very intuitive, very easy to use. Like, for example, a, devel a developer who knows about Redis but doesn't know about Golang, having a client like this allows him to, to basically do the H get all like this, client dot H get all, and also he can in he, he can also view all the different operation he has. You can see that here. Uh, also, we provide the context, the, co the context to the, um, to the parameters and all the keys that the function itself requires. Another fun thing here is that you see that the result is not directly returned to as the, is, as the data structure you might expect. If you know a little bit about Redis, hashes tend to be similar to maps of string string in Golang. Well, here, the hgetAll function does not return this map string string. It returns a CMD structure that contains different information about the command execution itself. It, it returns like the if, if, it re, if it gave errors, it returns some uh, other characteristics to the command itself. This means that we need to extract this result and parse it to the data structure we're expecting. This is done by the dot resolve function here, we can see. This dot resolve basically extracts both the error in, if in case it happened and the serialized response and returns it. Also, this one, this result also extracts an error in case it didn't fail, but you can't deserialize. For example, if you're trying to do a h get all, something that's not a hash. Okay, now we can talk about its competitor, ReadyGo. ReadyGo is an older library, first comment being performed in 2012. Even though it's an older library, uh, it's very, it's, con its contribution is very, very less, uh, less popular than Redis, than Go Redis. It currently stands at 10K stars in GitHub, and the last commit that was performed to the library was in, I believe, uh, three months before I wrote this slide. So this is very, very, very weird to me because having a, having a library that is older, I would assume that it's like the go-to thing, but maybe the Go Redis uh, blog post on, on Redis.blog on Redis, uh, pushed it up a little. The package itself uses a print-like print, print -like API style. This is the difference we talked about. I'll go into that a little bit later. And in terms, of, um, in terms of characteristics, it also allows custom commands. It allows collection pooling. However, this connection pooling here needs to be manual, as opposed to the, Redis, the Go Redis automatic connection pooling. And it also allows usage of Redis Sentinel and Redis cluster clients. However, you need to install additional plugins to the library in order to make it, to make it work. 
So how do we create a ready to go client? Well, we, we don't can create a ready to go client per se. There's, there's not a dot client structure. There's something called a connection or con. This, this Redis con, ready go dot con, sorry. This ready go dot con uh, function or, or structure, it basically acts as the client and it doesn't act as the client. I'll get into a little bit more detail now. You can use this connection to call Redis to execute commands to Redis. But like I said before, Redis offers automatic pooling. The Go Redis offers automatic pooling. So basically what we're saying here is that the client, the Go Redis client that we saw before, uh, already pools, uses pool, use pools. However, the, the, this one only uses one, one unique connection. You can do uh, uh, basically a ready go that pool as well, and it will serve more or less the same purpose as the other one. But for, for, for my presentation, I chose to do the connection to, to make it a little bit more clear. How do you create this connection? Well, you use the ready go that dial function. You provide uh, the trans transportation protocol. It's the TCP in this case. I haven't used UDP, which is the other one. If someone is open to use it, I don't, I don't even know if it works. If someone is open to use it, feel free to use it. You provide the address, and there is an additional node that is used for um, for options, just like the just like the Go Redis one, it different options. And also, uh, that 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 ba that's basically it. That's how you create a connection. Right. How do we call the Redis command? Right off the bat, you will see that there is a lot of differences here as the Go Redis way of calling the commands. This is what I mean with print-like API. You will see that in this case, the repo.connection that do this, there, there's this function. There's only one unique function that we use to call Redis commands. This is the do function, where the first argument provided is the command itself you wanna, you wanna call. And all the others are basically all the, all the, the, the parameters the, the Redis command itself requires. In this case, for example, when we're calling the age get all, we only need the key. Well, this in my opinion is a little bit weird. I will get into get into the right now. I like have I like having specific function for each one of the commands. Like I like I said before, for me it's more intuitive, more easy to use. But also having it like this, I don't know if you've tried this, but if you add additional parameters, since you can add as many parameters as you want to the do, they're all, they're all optional. If you add additional parameters, for example here, if you add two or three additional parameters, nothing will happen. I believe it will ignore it. But what happens if you do a age get uh, age set? Sorry where you set an ele element to the, um, to the hash, and you only provide the key. Well, basically, it will, it, will, it will give you an error that it needs another command. But this error is, is not given at compile time. This error is given at execution time. Having it like that, for me, is a little more, not my style, basically, because I'm using this library, I want to connect to Redis, and I, and I want to know what this Redis command requires in order to execute it. Because if, uh, if it doesn't give me errors, I, I assume here that at least I'm writing the command correctly. Also, you might see that there's a different, there's a difference in, in the context as well. Here, there is no context in sight. You don't provide the context anywhere when you call. I haven't gone into, into digging around about this, but for example, just like I said before, there is a pool, a pool structure. And when I, when I saw it, all the context requirements when you create this pool, we're using a context.background internally inside the in, inside the, the source code. I don't know if the dial does the same thing. I, was, I wasn't able to find it, to find the implementation. Finally, uh, just like the response from Go Redis, the, uh, the function, the, the dot do also needs to process and parse the response. Here we do it with a specific function that indicates the, uh, the response, the return response we want. Here we have ready go dot string map. This basically does says that whatever the do returns, I want it to be parsed as a as a string map. A little bit more intuitive, in my opinion, as compared to 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 Go Redis, because just like I said, I really I really like it when things are more clear, and and the functions really tell me what what they're doing. All right, now comes the moment of truth. We saw all the the package characteristics. We saw how they're different. They're different. How they're the same. But what about performance, direct performance? Well, what we're gonna do here is basically we're gonna run uh, a little benchmark running um, 
using the Go benchmark comma library. And we're going to compare a few commands, classic commands, like for example the set, get, and combination. This basically means that we will run a benchmark, uh, uh, iterate a benchmark n number of times for our sets, for gets, and for the combination of set and get. As well as for the age get all, age set, and for the L range and L push, which belongs to list commands, basically, that use the list data structure. We will add the memory as well, the memory consumed, the memory allocation, as well as the CPU usage to, to see, basically, what are the differences. So how do the benchmarks look like? Well, these benchmarks are very simple. I don't know if you've written benchmarks, but they're, these are very straightforward. What, what we do, basically, at the beginning is we create only one instance of the Redis repository. I've done it multiple times as well with uh, creating instances inside each one of the benchmarks. The results are fairly the same. I didn't get any differences. But doing it like this, there are some concurrency issues that you might, you might stumble upon. And this way, uh, what we do is we basically iterate uh, a defined number of times, and we execute the command itself from the repository. In this case, I believe, yes, this is the get command. And if we get an error, basically we, we, we panic. And I really hope it doesn't panic now. It hasn't panicked uh, never. If it panics now, the one that's going to panic is me. <laughs> OK. Let's run the benchmarks and see the results. One thing that I would like to point out, when you, when you do presentations, everybody says, don't run code live. Don't run it live. It's going to break. You're going to have problems. What, what did I do? Well, I'm going to run it live. If you need me to uh, zoom in a little bit more on the, on, the, on the font, I can do. So this is basically what we're going to run. We're going to run a Go test, indicating it's a benchmark. We will indicate as well the number of times we're going to run the benchmark. In this case, it's 100 times. I've, I've, we can run it a few times, and you'll see the results are fairly same. We will indicate that we want another parameter that is the bench memory, which will give us all the memory allocated. And finally, we will run, uh, the, the, fi the final parameter here is basically uh, running it, run it for all the, the, file, the test files in the root. I do it like this because I don't want to run each one differently because we, uh, well, if we can do it the same, we can do it like this, it will work. OK, let's run it. Let's make it panic, and let's, let's see me panic as well. What do you know, it didn't panic. Thank God. OK, now we can look into the results. Like I said before, we have the, fir the first one is the, this is the name of the, of the benchmark itself. I've indicated in, in each name the, the function that we're benchmarking. Here we have the, the number of times the benchmark has been executed. Here we have the execution time per operation the blocks of memory allocated per operation, and the allocations itself per operation. We can start looking around first at the execution times, and you will see a straight, uh, a common pattern here. If you look at both, it's a, sorry, it's a little uncomfortable because it's a, it's a long code, but you will see that the patterns are surprisingly the same. Here, 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 all of them, the execution times tend to match. You'll see that there's a greater execution times in the get and set all items and in the, in the list push, just like here. The get and set all items, list push. If we compare them, these are nanosecond differences, very, 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 very small. So in my, in my opinion, both of them share the same, same execution time. And there is, the differences is probably very, 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 I, I, I wouldn't count it. I wouldn't get into detail. But. What about the allocations? Well, take a look at the allocations. This one allocates 480 blocks per operation. This one, 152. These, these two, 200, more or less. 84 and 60, 80, 88 and 64, sorry. This one's more or less the same. And here, we have a little bit of discrepancies as well. So. What, what does this mean? Well, 
we have to test them all basically to give a final conclusion, but if you were to do the mean of all the all operations we tested, it will seem that the Reddit Go library is more performant, at least in terms of memory allocation. We already saw the CPU, both of them do the same thing. Because there are, I believe there are, it, it's a two, two in two, Go Ready Go offers uh, less memory allocation, and in the other one, it offers more. So we can come to the small conclusion or that maybe these uh, memory allocations uh, favor more Go Ready Go and uh, against Go Redis. See, in, ca in case uh, in case it crashed, I, I had some <laughs> I had a, <laughs> had a screenshot as well. Okay, let's let's see some conclusions. Well, of course, this was all done in my local MacBook. Even though it's a very good MacBook, it's a local uh, in a darker environment, running a, uh, a unique Redis instance that was only attacked by this be these benchmarks. If you're running this in a production environment where you have multiple services with thousands or millions of transactions accessing Redis, these results may differ. I encourage you to try to, to run it in prod, but then don't blame me if some, there are problems when you change it. But uh, also, there are issues that may arise in this. Concurrency issues, client timeouts, maybe, maybe one of the, cl the, the, the clients can't handle the traffic and then the other one can. The, these are all things that have to be revised in a production environment as well, or maybe, in, or maybe using load tests as well. So, not all functionalities were tested. Like I said in the, in the demo, uh, there are, there are, I didn't go into all the functionalities Redis offers. For example, I don't know if you know, but Redis offers JSON compatibility as well. You can store JSONs as well. They have the Redis JSON, I believe it's called. Also, they have Redis search, which is basically search through in, in, in Redis as well. These two functionalities I've not, I have not tested. Uh, fun fact, Go Redis announced that they offer compatibility with Redis JSON. I believe it was last, last week. They have two more type safe functions that are basically JSON get and JSON set, where you can in, in insert and recover data. So this is a very interesting, a very interesting thing because when I, did my, when I did my research, I didn't find any Go, Go Redis JSON compatibility for Go Redis and Redis Go. So now that Go Redis has announced it, they probably have the advantage against Redis Go, which hasn't announced anything basically about this. Also, we can see that uh, Redis offers, uh, Redis Go, like we said, offers a slightly better performance in terms of memory allocation wise to Go Redis. That would probably make you think that this is the, the one I'm, I would go with, or maybe this is the better one. I would conclude that this is the better one. Well. Like I spoil here, that's not gonna be the case. I would use Go Redis. Why would I, why would I use Go Redis? Well, the first, the first thing that we have to think about is the database itself, Redis, promotes this client to be the one that, that, that you're using. It basically says like, this is the official client for connecting with Redis and Golang. I mean, that's gotta count for something, right? Then there's the, then there's the, basically there's the popularity of the package and the maintenance. I don't know about you, but when I, when I integrate a new, a new library or a, or a new package in my, my services, one of the things that I really value is the, the community behind it. If it's maintained, if it's updated, if there are, there are issues being raised, and all these things, I think they all, all, all count or should be counted upon when you, when you decide to switch from one to the other. I personally prefer one that's, that has 20,000 stars, as opposed to one that has three, basically, because who knows? And finally, like I said before, I really like the library's implementation. Having this, uh, having this uh, type safe API approach for me makes it easier, makes it more int intuitive to, int to, to integrate. And it's just, for example, like I said, uh, if, um, if you have a, a, a person who hasn't, who's never used Go, but has used Redis, knows all its commands, Having a client dot h get all function in, as opposed to a client dot run or client dot set or uh, well not not set client dot start or client dot execute or something like that as a, like the print li the print style APIs, he'll probably find it a little bit more difficult to integrate it. So for me, that's more the the, the intuitive option. But this is just a personal stylist choice. Uh, this is something that I like. I like my APIs or my my packages to be clearer in this case. 
both of them work, as you see, perfectly. And that's pretty much it. Once again, I really I, I want to thank you all for joining me on my first ever talk. This was my first ever talk. I've never done one before. Thank you. Thank you, Simran. We can truly say that it was a thank great you. talk. You see thank the you, audience. Thank I think everybody thank enjoyed it, right? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, apologies if there were any hiccups, any discrepancies, what I said in the, in the talk and in and, and the slides. And also, uh, I, I was a little nervous. I'm still on. I can't feel my legs right now. <laughs> more wine. <laughs> more wine, yeah. Not coffee, just wine. Just wine. Yeah, make sure. And I hope it's, it was inter interesting, entertaining, and you guys got some, some, some tips and some usages on, about Redis and Golang, and try it for yourself as well. Uh, you can you feel free to reach out to me. This is uh, basically all my all my socials. You have my GitHub as well, where you can find this this uh, presentation, as well as all the source code where you can run the where you can run the Redis comparer. You can add your ba your own instances as well, and you can find also my blog where you can find my 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 topics. And yeah, that's 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 all by me. I hope you all have a great Rest conference. You enjoy the. You enjoy the Go Lab and enjoy Florence as well. It's okay. such a beautiful city and hope to see you again sometime. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Simeon. Let's pass now to the questions. Anyone who has a question? Yeah. Hi. Uh, first, great presentation. Uh, Thank you. Second, um, when you show the results of the benchmark, um, there are differences between the standard set and get, and when you use uh, the uh, ash. Uh, so in case of ash, uh, Redigo uses more and more memory. Um, so this means that probably to do benchmarking, we have to try all the different data sets, because uh, I did some experience on with using both, and uh, there are huge differences. For instance, the Prometheus exporter uh, uses uh, Redigo. Uh, but I don't know, maybe just because the maintainer is uh, lazy. I <laughs> don't want to change. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, uh, anyway, it is uh, very interesting to see how much uh, the big difference between the two libraries depending on the command. OK, thank you. Yeah, I will try it. Uh, the the one that does the H set and get basically the get all. What it does is basically it, it first of all it iterates and does an H H set a uh, specific number of times and then it gets the H get all. So mm -hmm. basically two loops. Maybe we can split it up and do a specific one for the H set as well. Okay, thanks. Hey, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, Wanted to ask if you knew like how these Go Redis libraries compared to Redis libraries in other languages, based on like the title of the talk of Go and Redis being a love story. Com wondering if like C and Redis or Rust and Redis are also love stories. If you have any insights on that. Well, I've only used Redis in C sharp. It has the stack exchange Redis. I don't know if you've used that. If you're using C sharp, that's the only one I've used. And if you compare it to the Go ones, there are a lot of differences as well. The Stack Exchange one is done by, I believe it was Mark Gravel or some, someone like that, so, something like that. I don't remember his name exactly. But he, uh, he works at Stack Overflow, and that, that library is very well maintained. It's very well maintained. It has more than, more than 30,000 stars on GitHub and all that. And it's very, very unique in its own way as well. It allows also uh, connection pooling, manual connect, uh, sorry, automatic connection pooling. But I don't know if there are any alternatives in other, in, other, in other languages. I haven't used it in Python, and I haven't used it in, in Java as well. I don't know the, the different comparison. So who knows? I don't know about you. I don't know if you think that it's a love story based on the talk. <laughs> but in, in other languages, sorry, I can't, I can't help you much. Any other question? It's worth mentioning that Redis is written by an Italian, so Forza Italia. <laughs> uh, and I had a question about JSON. Uh, you mentioned that Redis supports JSON. Does it also support using JSON as a serialization format uh, so that you can use JSON hardware acceleration for better performance as opposed to RESP, which is the native protocol? 
Yeah, yes, it, it uses it. Uh, I believe Go Redis uses it. Reddit Go, I wasn't able to look into to see if it uses it as well. But uh, Go Redis, you can even unmarshal the JSON itself and, and use it directly. They, say they they allow the marshalling. They have functions for um, marshalling and marshalling. Well, uh, basically, you can pass the type, the type you want it to uh, marshal to, and the Reddit Go tries to marshal it directly. So yeah, this one does support it. Any other question? Okay. I think we're good then. Thank you again, Simeon.